Hello, Revere, and welcome to another great Revere Veterans Community show. We're doing the June show, and I have as my guest the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs in Revere, Nick Boole. Welcome. Before we start the show, we have the burning of the flag, so you organize that, so why don't you take over on that for a few minutes? Okay. Um, this Sunday at 2 p.m., We'll be having uh, the flag retirement uh, of all the old flags that we've been collecting throughout the year uh, at our various boxes, uh, collection boxes that uh, are throughout the co uh, this community. And uh, we'll be retiring them. And uh, we'll be having the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and brownies. No, they don't call them brownies. The daisies, I think they're referred to, but Cub Scouts. Uh, so they'll be uh, performing the ceremony. So that'll be this Sunday, rain or shine, at uh, the VFW in Beachmont, 150 uh, Bennington Street. And uh, we'll have a uh, ceremony. Uh, if it starts raining, then we'll bring it inside and We'll have a, uh, they'll, they'll teach everyone uh, some flag etiquette, and uh, we should uh, have a good time. And uh, it's just to get the kids involved, and uh, the Boy Scouts always work hard, and the Girl Scouts, so we want to make sure that we take good care they of them. They do, Nick. Uh, first of all, before I start, I would like to uh, say a little history on the flags, if I may. But I want to thank you for Memorial Day. You did a beautiful job there in honoring the veterans. So you did a beautiful job of honoring yours truly. Oh, thank you. So thank you. Well, and on behalf of the city of Revere, thank you again. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. Now, you, would, you, would you like to tell no, me? No, you, you do you, it. You, want so you, you get the computer in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for the people that know, and I didn't know this till about 10 minutes ago, it was on June 14, 7077, less than one year after Betsy Ross had received the order from General Washington to make the first flag, the Second Continental Congress, pass the flag resolution, stating, and it resolved the flag of the United States, but the thing is that it wasn't until 100 years later that it was made officially Flag Day, so... It was on June 14, 80, 1877. 1877. 100 years after the flag resolution was adopted by the Continental Congress. And now in the 19th century, it says here, school teachers all over the United States, uh, I hate to do this here, do not let them take the flag away or out of the schools because some people are trying to do that. This is not what we fought for. This is not what I fought for, and I'm sure that's not what you fought for, Nick. That's right. So we can discuss that later. But also, you are a Vietnam veteran. Vietnam era veteran, yes. Thank I you am. for your service. Thank you. Thank right. you're, you're a World War II veteran. No, I'm really not a World I am a World War II veteran, but not a combat veteran. I want to be specific uh, on I'm that. I'm not a combat veteran either. No. So. But uh, what did you do in the, uh, when you were in the military for, uh, after the war? Right. Uh, the reason I got in after the war, I was only 16 when the war ended, so they wouldn't take me because of my age. That's the excuse they gave me. But I think there was more to that than just that. When I turned 17, I did enlist, and I went into the service, which was 46, because I was born in 29. And the reason I am a World War II veteran is only because President Harry S. Truman made December the 31st, 1946, the official end of World War II, even though the Germans surrendered on May the 8th, and the Japanese, I believe, surrendered sometimes in September. So the war was over long before I got in. But it wasn't officially over, according to President Truman. So that's why I'm considered a World War II veteran. But it's the people that will put their lives on the line. They are the real veterans of World War II, and they deserve that. Geez, you know, speaking about the uh, Vietnam, I mean the World War II, um, uh, Evelyn, uh, uh, Evelyn Morris came into my, no relation to you, came into my office, and she gave me some pictures of World War II veterans 
from uh, Shirley Avenue er er uh, era area. And uh, it's amazing that uh, there was uh, quite a few people. I showed the, uh, the book to, I, mean, I put them in uh, a binder. Oh. And I showed the pictures to uh, Ira, and he knew many of the people that were in there. Probably you, you know a lot of them also. Right. I got to tell you, when I was a kid in New York, and when the World War II broke out, which was December the 7th on a Sunday, the first hero of World War II, people don't realize, that came out of Brooklyn, New York, at least we thought, and he was a captain in the Air Force. His name was Ca Captain Colin P. Kelly. And what happened was he um, was flying his plane, and the plane got into a little trouble. And he had the other troops that were in there bail out, and he crashed it into the Japanese battleship. I believe it was called the Haruna, the name of the ship. So the, really the first World War II hero as I remember as a kid, was Captain Colin P. Kelly. And when I get home, I'm going to Google him up to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And if I did, I will correct it the next time we go on the end. Okay. Yeah, it must have been, uh, uh, Germany must have been uh, quite an area after the war uh, with the bombed out uh, Oh, it was brutal. Let me tell you, cities. people were in the streets. The, there was no house, very few houses. The only ha places that were not bombed was Swansea, where they had the conference but they had the final solution conference where Ackman and Himmler and all of those big shots were there. They didn't bomb Amgus, which was the office of military government U.S., where General Eisenhower and Lucius D. Clay were in charge over there. Because I was stationed at Amgus, so I know it was not bombed. Uh, we had billets. We were sleeping in houses. But what happened is the Russians, our so-called allies at the time, put on the balloon blockade, Nick, and at 11 o'clock at night, they would shut the electricity off. And in the wintertime, it was cold, so thank God some of the buildings had pot belly stoves, and we would get wood to burn it at night, and people would take turns sitting up at night so the place wouldn't catch on fire. And I, I would do it one night, someone else would do it another mm -hmm. night. But mm -hmm. that's how it was. But when I look at Germany today on here, it's one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Well, it's like Hiroshima uh, and Nagasaki. Uh, they're beautiful uh, cities today. And uh, it's amazing how far they've gone. And then we have uh, cities like Detroit. They look like they've been bombed out. I, I was going to, you took the words, uh, right? I, mean, I was thinking uh, what you just said. Here it is, uh, 2017, uh, 16. And, uh, you know, our, our cities look like they're bombed out. And uh, the. You don't even have to go to Detroit. You can go right to Atlantic City and some of the dilapidated neighborhoods there. And it looks just like World War II. I agree. I agree. By the way, I got to thank you for one thing. You did a beautiful job of bringing the Purple Hearts to the city. Tell us about how you got started and a little history on that. Well, um, I received the uh, email from a friend of mine, and he told me about uh, his community was a Purple Heart community. So um, I says, well, how'd, how'd, I asked him the process of uh, going uh, to get to become a Purple Heart city, and he told me, and I applied for the uh, Purple Heart city, and uh, uh, we were approved, and uh, we've got plenty of Purple Heart recipients in our community. And um, on August 7th, uh, we'll, which is Purple Heart Day, we'll be uh, honoring our Purple Heart uh, recipients. And uh, while uh, we're also celebrating the Vietnam War, uh, the Vietnam War, you know, we'll, right now it's 50 years, uh, well, it's 51 years, but uh, right now. But uh, the thing is, is uh, for the next uh, five years, we'll be celebrating uh, the Purple, uh, the Vietnam War, honoring them. When did that actually start? 1961? 62. 62. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, the thing is, is uh, we, well, actually, uh, the Vietnam War started, believe it or not, in the Eisenhower administration. That's in the 50s. So, uh, yeah, the late 50s uh, before Kennedy took, uh, took right. power. Yep. And uh, we had advisors uh, there. And uh, Was that that incident where they made the Gulf of Tonkin? 
was that? No, the Gulf of Tongan was uh, much later. Oh, was it later? 1968, I believe. Okay. Uh, was the Gulf of Tongan. But um, uh, the thing is, uh, we, uh, the war, we're honoring the recipients, the Purple Heart recipients, uh, by, uh, we're going to pre present them with lapel pin, uh, pins. And uh, we uh, also are commemorative uh, city as far as the Vietnam War is concerned. Uh, I've had uh, the Purple Heart signs uh, put up. We, How many did you get made, if I may? Well, add? I had five signs made up. And I put them in places where I thought they would uh, be uh, noticed um, uh, on Let me coming, in, coming into uh, Broadway. Uh, the city from Chelsea, they're on, it's under the, just be, uh, after you go under the bridge and come into Revere, there's uh, a uh, Purple Heart sign on the pole there. And uh, thank you to uh, Ray and Angelo from the DPW. Uh, we went out and uh, we installed all the uh, signs. And uh, we have one on Bennington Street uh, in East Boston coming Coming from East Boston, that's in Revere. Is that and near the uh, Beach Mafia? No. Yeah, well, it's right, right there. And oh. then we put one on uh, um, 107, and uh, we also did it at uh, Brown Circle. We put one at the Brown Circle, and uh, coming in from McClellan Highway into Revere, we put one there also. So uh, just to inform uh, people that. Uh, Revere is a Purple Heart community. That's great. Yeah. Now, can, uh, is every city in town of Massachusetts a Purple Heart? Or no. no, uh, no. You have to apply for you it? You have to apply for it. And uh, uh, we we're very fortunate last year by having uh, the state commander of the Purple Heart uh, community. Uh, Who was that? Uh, um, Chisholm? No, no. His name was uh, Bob Riley. Oh. And uh, we. Uh, had them attend and we had the ceremony and we made presentation and I had a Purple Heart in my office that was there for a number of years. Uh, Nobody, yeah, I see it. Uh, and it was uh, for uh, a gentleman named Garrity and uh, I, the family called me up and says that, uh, you know, his, uh, uh, his Purple Heart, they couldn't find it and, uh, and I asked the name and I says, and they told me, and I says, I, gee, I have the Purple Heart here in my office. And I made the presentation to the family. Uh, I gave the family back uh, the Purple Heart, so. Uh, you gave it back yeah, to them? Yeah, I you gave it back one to that the was family. On the yeah. Against the window in there? Exactly, yeah. So the, no, they were very happy and, uh, you know, uh, as they should be. And uh, it, it was very nice. Uh, I'm so happy that they attended. But uh, thanks to uh, the VFW and Beachmont, uh, you know, they always support us. And uh, um, actually, both VFWs in our community support uh, anything we uh, ask them and the, the American Legion and the Jewish War Veterans. I, I mean, uh, uh, the um, Revere Veterans Council to uh, also, uh, so we're, we get a lot of support and uh, in case I, I need anything, they, they're they always right there. Well, anytime you need anything, you can count on the Revere Allied Veterans Council. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, we uh, honored... Uh, Salvatore Santoro. Santoro. At 102 years old, uh, God bless him. I know it. But, uh, that was your idea to go where, to, where I went to get the cake, and I make no bounds about it. We went to Libertos, and they made a beautiful cake for him. Yeah, yeah, they did a nice job, and uh, so this is this is what it's all about. It's veterans helping veterans. Veterans, right? I mean, that's that's what we have to do, and uh, uh, I know we have a lot of veterans who, uh, you know, they like to put signs in their windows and uh, their cars, and but they don't do anything. Uh, to help the veteran. I have to tell you, there are people in the city of Revere and, uh, that are non-veterans, but they do a lot more than some of the veterans do for veterans. I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I'll give you two examples. One is uh, Labadini, the kid, always there for the veterans. 
The other one is Al Terminello Jr. Yeah, yeah. Always there for the veterans. Well, we're very fortunate. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but I yeah. just don't know their names. You would know them better than yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I, I mean, we could, uh, God, you can go down the list, you know, uh, you know, Pam Anderson. Oh, and forget it. She's a veterans veteran. So I she, mean, she comes to our senior center. I got to tell you, she takes care not only of the veterans, the non-veterans too. She does everything for everybody. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what we have to do is uh, people helping people. So, and uh, uh, it, it's uh, it's going to be a good year because uh, uh, come Veterans Day, uh, the Veterans Committee will be having a time at uh, the VFW in Beachmont, and that's uh, November the sixth, I believe. I believe yeah, Veterans November. Day. Uh, well, uh, so it's a little early. That's where you'll before. be celebrating. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, having a time at the, and uh, we generally get a great crowd. Here's something I like to throw at you. You also have a people, th there's some veterans that don't even know that, or spouses of veterans. Tell us a little about the food bank for veterans. Uh, we've been serving food for the veterans and um, and their spouses uh, for, I think, about three years now. Now, and Nick, excuse me, I was asked a question at the senior center. Is it only for the spouses of the veterans, or is it also the kids of the veterans? No, they're just, just the, the spouses. spouses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because just the uh, spouses, folks. Yeah, because it, it would be too much. And okay. We don't have uh, One the One of the women asked me that question. We don't have the facilities to uh, take care of. You know, everybody in the community, we try to do the best we can. And thanks to Donna and uh, Donna Driesen. Yep. And, and Steve. Uh, and Steve Driesen. And uh, uh, they're tremendous. Well, Donna runs the whole thing. Oh, she does? Yeah. Oh, she, uh, she does a beautiful job. I, yeah, she does. I get all the acclimates and she does all the work. Well, that's the way it is. <laughs> oh, <I'd laughs> She's great. Okay, I'd like to go back to... Um, you, holidays coming up, like we talked about uh, August the 7th was the Purple Heart, the veteran, November 11th, we're still going around the cemetery putting flags on? Well, we don't... Uh, I know Memorial Day is the big day for it. Yeah, we don't normally do uh, flags on uh, Veterans Day. Memorial Day is for those veterans who have died either in right. combat or in their memory uh, or uh, after the um, so it's for the uh, deceased veterans the veterans day is for the veterans so uh, the li the ones that are living you know so uh, i mean we we don't put the flags on the graves because First of all, the they cost do is born, though, when you go down to born on not veterans. not a memor not on Veterans Day. They do Memorial Day, but not on Veterans Day. All right. So, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, it, it, Veterans Day, as I said, is for the surviving veterans, the ones that are still kicking around. And a lot of the restaurants are so good that they even offer them free meals if you're a veteran. Well, yeah, there's, uh, they, they have uh, discounts uh, for meals. and See, that's why I don't eat all year long. I wait till November 11th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you could have fooled me. <laughs> but uh, that's another story. Okay. Um, I, I, on that uh, particular subject, I'm working on the a veteran's identification card for the city. Uh, the, you mean each veteran in the city of Riverdale is going to get one? Uh, well, uh, they're going to come into the office and we'll get the information. We have to verify that they are, in fact, a veteran. And then they'll... Uh, uh, then I would be entitled for one, maybe? Yes, you'll be entitled for one. Uh, what happens is a lot of these uh, folks go to Home Depot or uh, Lowe's or, uh, and uh, they don't have their discharges with them and sometimes that so happened to me that happened to me and guess who saved my life right there dennis michella from the uh matola post they give you a 10 percent discount right. and they asked me because i had bought a um i was gonna buy a uh a, a dryer 
and the lady who was very nice said, uh, you know, if you're a veteran, you get a 10% discount because I had this cap on World War II. I says, I'm a veteran. She says, can I see some ID? And I didn't have it with me. But Dennis, they knew Dennis, who is a veteran, and Dennis vouched for me, and I did yeah. get to 10%. Well, this is what we're trying to do. And uh, I've been working with Bob Upton. Uh, Bob uh, is the new executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. Commerce. Yep. Congratulations, Bob. Yeah, he's doing a wonderful job, and uh, I thought he was here for a minute, uh, the way you looked. No, because he's the one that recommended. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, anyway, don't make me laugh. Excuse me. I, he's going to be working. <laughs> we're going to be working together to uh, get the Chamber of Commerce uh, to go around to businesses in our community and see if we can get a discount by showing the uh, identification card. So uh, uh, the MIS department in this uh, city uh, has agreed to uh, uh, produce the cards, and I've got a couple that uh, they have done and were it's in the, the process the uh, of approving uh, some of the designs so but that, that's what our intentions are hopefully before Veterans Day we'll have many of them out and uh, you'll come in go to the MIS they'll take the, the picture uh, and uh, what's we'll, the MIS if I mean? uh, uh, the uh, computer. Uh, oh, the, it'll be done in your office? Well, no, up in uh, City Hall in the computer uh, oh, section. Oh, upstairs where yes. veteran is? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, veteran, he's a, uh, he, he came up with uh, a few designs and uh, and then Bill Reedy and uh, myself. Well, I got to tell you, I met veteran only a few times, but that kid is an sharp. expert. An he's expert sharp. on the computers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm he was a good hire by the city, that's for sure. That so the city made a good find on that young man. So we're going to have that, and uh, this way, with the uh, to be able to go to local community, uh, local businesses, and hopefully by showing the identification card, uh, you'll get a discount uh, right. for being a veteran. That would be good. But I have to verify. Uh, I have to verify the uh, the you are in fact a veteran in order to get a card and then we fill out the application and we take it from there. Okay, I'd like to talk about, it. well we still have five minutes left, so December the 7th, Pearl Harbor, uh, Pearl Harbor Day. What were you in during Pearl Harbor Day? I was a young, let's say 42, I was 13 years old at the time and I was living in Brooklyn, New York and I left Brooklyn to come to America, that's why I'm in Maria. Okay, I want you to do it. <laughs> and I was out playing ball in the field with the kids. And uh, it was around 2 o'clock, and my mother came yelling at the kids to get into the house, get into the house, and we couldn't understand why. And she says, Japan just bombed Pearl Harbor. And there was about 12 of us kids, and we all took off in different directions to run home. And I ran into the house, and there was a football game that my younger brother was listening to. So that was the Giants playing with a kicker by the name of what I mentioned before, Lou Groza. And uh, that's gone back in the 42, folks. So that's 74 years ago. That's 41, yeah, 1941. 40, I mean, 40, yeah, 41, 75 years ago. Excuse me. I wasn't too good in math. Yeah, you know that. We know it. Yeah, well, I flunked it three times. I know it. One more would have made it eight, yeah. so what? <laughs> <laughs> Graduated from the second grade. Uh, okay, but anyway, we got in the house. My kid brother was listening to the football game, and that's how I remember Pearl uh, Harbor. That, that's amazing. It's a, a terrible time in American history. I never mentioned that to people, but I got to tell you, and before uh, 1942, uh, 43, let's say I was 13, 40, 1943 or 44, the school had a thing, a program that where the young men went off to war, they needed kids to go to work on the farm. And I, I volunteered to go on the farm and they sent me to a place called Ira, uh, not Ira Novoselsky, but Ira, Vermont. And there was a family there, I hope they're listening to this, called Hamilton, Hamilton Fish, that was the family. I got in there. 
I worked there for the whole summer, the whole 10 weeks that I was out of school. But I did learn one thing, to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, the farmer would get me up, and he would say, Morris, go out and get the cows. And, and the only way I could find the cows is the main one had a bell on it. So I would look for the one with the bell, and then when I took the one with the bell with me back to the barn, all the others would follow. So he showed me how to milk the cows, and I'll never forget that. He says, the first time you do, you got to sit down and do it vertically. Well, Morris wasn't that bright at 13. So I took the things and I made them horizontal. Yep, and they were all over me. <laughs> all over me the first time. I, I mean, if you think I was white then, I was even whiter then. <laughs> and I never forgot that. Too so bad they didn't have pictures at that time. I, I'm glad. I'm yeah, glad. If they had cameras, they would have. would have been good. We used to go swimming in Lake Bomazine, which was a lake right next to that. And I was not far from Rutland, Vermont, by the way. Nick, we got about two minutes left. Take a minute and a few seconds to wrap it up, if you like, to go right ahead. Well, I just want to uh, reiterate that uh, we are going to have the flag retirement, and we wish to have as many folks come out and support. Can they bring flags down there, too? Yeah, to sure. Oh. oh, sure. You can, if you have any old flags, uh, please feel free to bring them on down. And uh, we'll retire them, and uh, the VFW and Beachmont, and we'll be serving some uh, pizza and soda uh, for uh, the kids. Did you say pizza and soda? Uh, pizza and soda, yeah. yeah. So uh, the uh, well, it should be a good time, and the I know the scoutmasters told me that the kids are very, very excited about uh, performing good. performing the ceremony. They've been working very hard, so. That's great, Nick. So I want to say thank you for coming on the uh, show. God you. bless you, Nicky. Thank you for and having me. And I hope me. you stay as the commissioner for a long, long time. Well, a I'll long so. time in there. And I want to thank all the people for tuning in. I want to thank our troops who are serving here and overseas. God bless them. God bless our great country, the United States of America. But most of all, Never, never, never take the flag out of the school or the Pledge of Allegiance out of the school. I'm not talking about Revere. I'm talking about the country. And uh, I was watching on Google, uh, Terry Brasher, I'll be real quick, had a beautiful thing on Revere when Mayor Rizzo was the mayor at the time. So Terry Brasher put Revere on the Today Show, and I never knew it until I went on Google and found it here. Uh -huh. So I finally learned how to work the toy. So, Nick, thank you. Well, thank you, Morris.